Not too bad. One more mag. Getting down there, ain't it? Ha <laughs> ha! Alrighty. That's pretty fun. Well, guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. And today we're going to be talking about a handgun that I've come to love quite a bit. It's the FN FNX Tactical. Okay. This is a uh, firearm that FN produces here in the U.S. It's an awesome double single action, semi automatic, 45 ACP handgun. Uh, I've had this gun about a year and a half or two, and I've run the ever-loving crap out of it, okay? Haven't cleaned it much either. I've been running this thing suppressed, unsuppressed. Um, very, very awesome gun. You've got a lot of things going for this particular pistol that we're going to talk a lot, uh, about a little bit here for you today. You've got a threaded barrel. It's 578 by 28. So uh, it'll accept a wide variety of different suppressors, which we are going to run. In fact, I'll uh, pull the... Uh, cap off here so it has a uh, thread protector that protects the barrel from the factory now the difference between the tactical and the standard FNX the FNX itself as a pistol design is available in 9 millimeter 40 caliber and 45 ACP but only the 45 is available in the tactical configuration the gun itself is pretty much the same as the standard FNX but with three major differences that you're not going to see in the other gun one is the threaded barrel the high night sights, and the cut for the RMR or slide riding style red dot optic. In this case, we're running a Burris Fast Fire 3. It's a uh, lock breech tilting barrel, uh, semi-automatic. One of the main features of this gun that makes it really, really, really awesome is the fact that you've got a 15-shot magazine. So you've got 15 rounds of 45 ACP in your hand, on tap, ready to go. Magazines are available. They're not priced too bad. But it is an FN gun, so, you know, mags are going to be a little bit on the pricey side. Uh, the guns themselves are pretty much the ideal 45 ACP suppressor host. That, this is the exact gun that got me into suppressor ownership. Uh, when this gun first came out, I saw it, I liked it, I got to shoot a couple that, you know, friends of mine had, and I had to have it, okay? Uh, I've got a uh, Tyrant. Uh, 45 suppressor here from AAC. We're going to put this on the gun. We're going to shoot a little bit suppressed for you here. Now this particular suppressor, this rig right here, I've had for a while. I finally just got my suppressor out of NFA jail. All right. We'll talk a little bit more about the gun as we go. 15 shots or 45 ACP. We're going to be taking a lot of shots here today. All the steel we're running here is from shootsteel.com. Uh, the ammunition that we're running is from Federal. Uh, this 230 grain ball is what I've been shooting this entire time. Here in a minute, we'll run some of this hush as well. Once Chad has a chance to get on this thing, he's going to put his can on it and uh, give his opinion on it. You've got an ambidextrous safety, the cocking mechanism. So you've got a standard safety. You just flip up. Just like a 1911, you can have it cocked and locked, ready to go with the safety on. If you swing it down, it puts it on fire. If you swing all the way down, it decocks. It is double single action. So I'll tell you what, I'll decock the hammer, take a few shots in double action for you. Double action on this gun is about 10 pounds, guys. How about a double action shot at 75 yards? Ah, let's see what we got. There we go. Not too bad. That thing is awfully quiet. I'm going to finish this magazine out, and I've got a hodgepodge of random hollow points we're going to take out some of our sodas with here. Pretty accurate gun. Let's kill our gopher.
All right, one headshot for the little gopher in the sky. <laughs> I clipped him right in the face. Okay, got a random hodgepodge of different hollow points that I just grabbed out of the gun room. Everything from Remington Golden Sabres, Federal uh, offerings. We're just gonna take out some of our sodas here. Hollow points with a suppressor and sodas equal a ton of fun. Check this out. Mind you guys, these are supers, so they're running, running a little bit quicker. <laughs> not too bad. A couple of those rounds were kind of going through the necks of the soda bottles and not even hitting the soda. Uh, but you can hear the, the sound that that thing puts out. I mean, when, when those sodas get smacked with that 230 grain hollow point, it's just awesome. Now, uh, accuracy wise in the accuracy department, this gun is a very accurate pistol. It has a 5.3 inch barrel. So pretty much right in line with a 1911. You do have a full length guide rod. Um, here in a moment when I remove the suppressor, I'll show you how easy it is to disassemble it. There's interchangeable back straps. I believe four of them are available. The back strap that's in this gun is a flat back strap because I like it nice and thin. Uh, the one thing I like about this gun a lot is the fact that you don't have that big bulky grip like you get on a, a, a Glock Model 21 where it feels like you're holding a two by four when you're shooting it. This gun has a very comfortable grip, not an overly aggressive amount of stippling on the grip. Um, you know, not too bad at all. I mean, my wife shoots this gun and she's got pretty soft hands. Not really a big deal for her. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is that on this uh, slide, it is stainless steel. Now, the, the finish that they put on this slide, they're a little bit hush-hush about what exactly they use on it. I would imagine it's probably some form of melaniting. It's kind of a dull melaniting, though. Uh, if you take, uh, like right now, it's really dry. So if you look at the finish of the slide, it's real, you know, kind of gray looking. But if you take this uh, finish and you just squirt a little oil on it and wipe it down, it gets real black and looks real pretty if you're into that kind of thing. But in terms of a duty gun, definitely an awesome pistol. Um, FN actually produced this variant of this particular handgun uh, to put in for field trials to replace the M9 Beretta. For a while, the Army and the military in general were talking uh, pretty hard about replacing the Beretta uh, in military service. I don't know how far along that, that has gone overall, but I'll tell you what, these things are seeing some use here and there. Um, I'm not going to say who, but I've got a couple of uh, really good friends, and let's just say that they work for a few alphabet agencies, and uh, they use this gun as a duty gun uh, for everyday duty and for clandestine operations. One of the minor detriments to the design of this gun, it's easy to field strip, it's easy to clean, the construction of the gun is good, it's made out of good materials. If I didn't mention, it is a polymer lower, but the only bad part is uh, soldiers love these guns, but armorers hate them because they are a real pain in the butt. If you break a, cocking, a decocking mechanism or anything in the trigger mechanism, you just about have to destroy the cock, uh, decocking mechanism to get the gun apart. So a lot of the guys that I've talked to that run these guns in a real world uh, military or duty situation, they own two of them. So they have a backup. So their unit will purchase their duty gun and then they'll purchase a backup or the unit will purchase a backup in case there's a problem in the field, they just swap the frame out and get back to work. Just putting that out there, you know, they're, they're not the easiest things to work on. It is a cool gun though. I've probably put 3,500, maybe 4,000 rounds through this gun since I've had it. I've never really had any major issues out of it. Real accurate, yeah. So that right there, I just put five shots into about the size of a, eh, maybe a silver dollar. That's not too bad. 
It's real accurate. Let me see if I can, uh, let's try some uh, head shots there on this D28. Not bad. Right over his shoulder. I mean, once you know where you're at, I mean, this gun will definitely put him in there. It's more accurate than it needs to be by a long shot. Um, just a great gun. Let's try a little popper back there. Well, we got a soda hanging out there. Let's, let's shoot him. Uh-uh, there's still some coke in the bottom there. Let's see if we can... Ha! Shoot it out of the bottom there. Not bad. We got a soda on the ground there. Let's take him out. Not bad. All right, we got a popper back there. Let's shoot him. I'm, I'm very satisfied with this gun. One thing to mention too, when you're running the slide riding sight, kind of like I'm running this fast fire, the carbon and everything, as it blows back, it will obscure the front lens on this sight. So every now and then just take your shirt and just kind of wipe it a little bit clean it off because it can obscure your vision a little bit. I'm going to run this one last mag and I'm going to turn it over to Chad, let him have a go. And he's going to show you the suppressor that he runs on his 45s uh, on my FNX here. I think I pretty much hit the high points. I'm going to shoot one more mag here and then we'll disassemble the gun. Take some long range shots back there. Other than that one that hit low, I just put three shots into about maybe the size of a grapefruit at about 75 yards. Now, in terms of accuracy, I mean, I, I can't really imagine a gun needing to be more accurate than that. For everyday duty use, for hunting use, I mean, gosh, you could put you some, you know, good quality hollow points in this thing, and uh, you could probably humanely kill a deer at 25, 35 yards with this thing, no problem with proper shot placement. Let's see. Right in the face. There we go. Let's see. All right, not bad. I'm going to pull the suppressor off, and boy, she's hot. I got to get the can off in order to uh, disassemble the pistol for you. Woo! That's warm. Okay. So, to disassemble the pistol, really easy. Make sure it's unloaded. This lever, very simply, just swings down. Hold the forward opposed uh, cocking serrations, release the slide stop, allow the slide to slowly drift rearward, and it separates. The guide rod is a captured guide rod assembly. It's all a uh, metal guide rod, and it's all captured, one piece. And then your barrel comes out the rear, just like most semi-auto pistols. Very, very, very simple mechanism. There's not a whole lot to go wrong. The frame is pretty simple. Um, one thing I didn't mention from before is the rearward and forward opposed cocking serrations. Some people prefer to charge from the front if they're wearing gloves or something like that. Um, another design attribute of this gun that's really interesting is uh, despite the fact that the gun is a little bit difficult to completely disassemble in terms of the frame, if you do damage something like the slide rails on the frame, uh, FN actually uh, touts that they are interchangeable so you can swap those out and get new ones. So say you screw something up or I don't know, you have some squib load and you have a really hot load or something, damage the gun or whatever. Okay, you drop the gun, it falls down in the mud and then you shoot and plug the mud out and bulge your barrel and rip the, the rails out of the frame. If the frame's not damaged beyond use again, you can uh, change those out with relative ease. So uh, I'm going to put the gun back together. Chad's going to have a go. Uh, this thing has just been so so much fun. Uh, we'll let Chad have a go here. Okay, guys, I'm going to take a few shots of the FNX 45 Tactical here. I've outfitted uh, Eris Gun here with my Griffin Armament Revolution 45 can. This is a pretty neat suppressor. It's modular, so you can take a few baffles out, shrink the size of the can down, and uh, run it in a little bit shorter configuration. It's, it's a little bit louder, but if you run it wet, which I'm going to show you in a little while, it can be pretty dang quiet in that configuration. It's a little bit lighter weight as well. But um, I picked this up from Quiet Right Firearms. I would have bought the new Tyrant M, 
from AAC. Um, basically the same thing as Eric's tie ramp, but in a modular configuration similar to the uh, Revolution here. But uh, sadly, it wasn't available at the time that I made my purchase, so I went ahead and picked this one up. But I uh, couldn't be happier. Great, great suppressor. Um, so I'm gonna run some of the uh, Freedom Munitions Hush ammunition. And this is just uh, subsonic ammo. I mean, of course, 45 ACP is pretty much all subsonic in a 230 grain range. But uh, this ammo runs a very clean burning powder, which keeps your suppressed firearms a little bit cleaner for longer. So you don't have to really worry about maintaining as much when you're running suppressed. Cause you do get a bunch of blowback and a bunch of extra crud in your, uh, in your receiver area as such, you know, the, uh, the bottom of the frame and everything just gets more dirty. But anyways, run this uh, Revolution here set up on the 45 and see what we can do. I absolutely love this gun. I'm actually thinking about picking one up myself just as a good host. All right, let's see. Let's see if I can do any better than Eric did. Let's see. Eh, it shoots a little bit lower. There we go. Put a couple in the dirt. I think that tie ramp might be a little bit quieter. Oh yeah. And that last popper is certainly not gonna get away. All right, I'm take a shot at the gopher. My shots going. There we go. Can sort of walk off just a touch. You always got to check that thing, make sure that it's nice and tight. <laughs> well, I popped my soda. Let's <laughs> even pop it a little bit more. Boy, little Burris gets certainly dirtied up running it suppressed. I'm gonna show you guys what this sounds like wet. Stole this from my wife. It's a little silicone pot holder. Works great for uh, pulling your hot suppressors on and off of your guns. So we're gonna pull the can off and we're gonna basically just pour a little bit of water in the uh, back of the can in the booster assembly and whatnot and kind of let it ride into the first baffle there. And yeah, a good, good amount is close to a cap full. Gives you, you know, around five cc's or so, which is kind of a typical amount. All right. So we're gonna take that cap full of water and just carefully pour it into our suppressor. And we're just gonna kind of rotate that around. And what the water's gonna do is it acts kind of like a, an ablative material and it soaks up a little bit more of the uh, combustion gases and whatnot and actually gives you a little bit quieter report from the suppressor. So, all right, that should be good enough. But one thing about it, it's not real fun to shoot wet because it does throw a bunch more crap back up in your face. It gets the gun real nasty. And I've shot this particular gun wet before with this can and uh, pretty much any suppressor is gonna throw all kinds of junk all over your red dot. I just try to use the iron sights when I'm shooting wet, but anyways, let's grab another mag. Gun's running great. I mean, you know, I've shot Glock 21s and other 45s and whatnot, 1911 hosts, and the thing is, this gun, just 15 shot capacity, and the size of the grip, it's just nice and thin. I mean, like Eric mentioned, the Glock 21, I mean, thing's like a brick. It really is, it's like a two by four. And uh, I just can't, I just can't get around a big gun like that that's uncomfortable to, to handle. I mean, maybe for a bigger guy with bigger hands and such, I mean, I could see it, but you know, for what this gun is, I mean, it's just a great, great host. I mean, it's just perfect for this application. So we're gonna take a few more shots wet and see what the sound is like wet here. Take a few shots in the dirt, just see what we've got here. 
All right, so a little bit of maybe first round pop there. Certainly noticeably quieter, but gets messy, messy, messy. All right, let's take some shots of steel. We're good. It's a little awkward to shoot with the suppressor on there, but it's fun. All right, long range shots, about 70 yards or so, 75 yards, a little low, a little low. Little left. There we go. <laughs> that is so much fun. Boy, that thing's getting dirty. You do a part, it just sinks them right in there. I mean, there's really no problem. Like Eric said, it is a very accurate gun when you do your part. I'll take a few shots at what's left over in the soda bottles, and then I'm gonna finish this thing out here. Well then, all right. <laughs> Let's see, you got a full soda down there? Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, sodas can't get away from me. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at the uh, FNX 45 Tactical. We had a lot of fun making this video. And if you guys remember Eric saying, he's had this gun for quite a while. And we have put a ton of rounds to this thing. And, um, you know, just getting into suppressors and everything, this is a perfect, perfect 45 ACP host. It really doesn't get much better than this gun, in our opinions. Um, think about a few things, okay? Like Eric mentioned, the Glock 21 earlier. All right, it's a great gun. No doubt about that, but it does feel like a two by four in your hand. Plus, you know, Glock is now making the, I think the MOS models with the RMR cut from the factory, which is a good deal. But previously you would have to send your slide off and get an RMR cut put in it to run a slide riding site. Okay. Plus you're talking 150 bucks at least for high sites to clear the suppressor. Um, the magazine capacity is not the same. This is a 15 shot double stack magazine with a smaller and more comfortable grip than a Glock 21 or even, I mean, I hate to say it, but even like an M&P and you know, Eric and I love the M&P series from Smith and Wesson. They have a very comfortable grip, but I mean, this gun is a little bit over a thousand dollars new street price used. Yeah. 900 bucks. Okay. Um, but the thing is, if you're gonna spend the money, buy once, cry once, and just get a nice host. Oh, and I didn't even think about it, but um, a threaded barrel for your Glock 21, 200 bucks. I mean, in a lot of cases. So by the time you spend all the money to make a gun that you already have, a suppressor host, 445, then you can just spend the money and get something like this and be done with it and have a gun that runs perfectly. And the thing is, the gun's great. We love it, you guys know that. It shoots great, and we've never really had any issues out of this thing. As long as it's kept clean, I mean, you're good to go. But anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned. We've got a ton of range stuff coming, a lot of pistol reviews. We've got some SBR videos coming out, a lot of, lot of fun stuff. But anyways, you guys take it easy. We'll see you soon.